The rediscovery of club swinging in the United States Army began in 1994 at Fort Benning, Georgia, when a team of NCOs and officers from across the post began a voluntary four-year action-based research study of past and present physical readiness training doctrine. Along the way, they discovered the forgotten art and science of club swinging. During those years, they studied every PRT manual the Army ever published and hundreds of related books, articles, and film archives. They quickly realized that the most sophisticated, practical, and defensible PRT systems were created during what historians now call the golden era of American physical culture from around 1885 until 1920, and a brief renaissance of those earlier training methods, materiel, and motivators during World War II. The U.S. Army's golden era of physical readiness training began when Herman J. Curler was appointed Master of the Sword at West Point in 1885. He retired in 1923. Lieutenant Colonel Curler is known as the father of U.S. Army physical readiness training. Throughout his long service at the academy, he was known for his ingenious training methods and always leading by example. Curler was a second generation German-American Turner gymnast and grew up training here at the Milwaukee, Wisconsin Turner Hall. It was functional beyond anything we had in the early 1990s. And there were the clubs. This is America's first international gymnastics team. That's Carter on the left. His uncle, George Brocious on the right, was born in 1839 and passed away in 1920. He was the Milwaukee Turner Gymnasium director and chief instructor. These were some of his cadre. Notice their upright posture. Brocious served in the Civil War and was a master of German military gymnastics. And again, we see the clubs. This is a glimpse of the system Lieutenant Colonel Curler and his cadre created at West Point. Dumbbell drills, medicine balls, partner body weight training, weighted bars, low and high horizontal bar, Pommel horse. Vaulting. Climbing. And again, club swinging. Humans have been swinging clubs in combat since before the beginning of recorded history. Some even made clubs from a human femur. That's Hercules on the right, swinging his club. But as the team drilled deeper into the history of club swinging, they discovered a mysterious spiritual connection. This is the ancient Zoroastrian deity of justice, Rasno. This is the Vedic deity Hanuman, with his gada. This is Vishnu. Over the centuries, club swinging methods were developed by Indian soldiers, police, and others whose caste required strength, agility, balance, and martial arts skill. 
British officers involved in the annexation of India during the 1850s and 60s were surprised to find the Indian warriors who were expert at swinging these clubs in various graceful and fantastic motions. They noted that beside the great recommendation of simplicity, the Indian club practice possesses the essential property of expanding the chest and exercising every muscle of the body concurrently. Club swinging eventually migrated to Britain, where Queen Victoria herself began to practice, and it wasn't long before both civilians and military personnel were practicing, and club swinging became very popular. In the early 1860s, Simon Kehoe, an American fitness enthusiast and businessman, traveled to England where he observed the art of club swinging. Believing he had found the perfect exercise apparatus, he began to manufacture and sell clubs to the American public. Kehoe called himself the King of Clubs. Kehoe published this book in 1866. His method focused on heavy club swinging, while boxers, gymnasts, and the general public eventually leaned toward more functional light clubs. Nevertheless, Kehoe's efforts helped generate public interest in club swinging throughout America. By the late 1800s, dozens of books, articles, and booklets were published on the topic. Kehoe sent Lieutenant General Ulysses S. Grant a set of dumbbells and Indian clubs in 1866, and that was perhaps the turning point for club swinging in the United States Army. Kehoe published Grant's response in his book, and it fueled interest among soldiers, and clubs began to show up across the Army. But it was Lieutenant Colonel Curler's club swinging method that prepared thousands of future officers over the decades to lead and teach club swinging across the Army. After Lieutenant Colonel Curler retired in 1923, sports and games began to slowly dominate the West Point PRT doctrine, and his system began to fade. By 1933, the quality of club swinging had eroded considerably. Few of these cadets are technically correct. Look carefully. They have no essential rhythm, proper mechanics, or timing. Around 10 years later, during World War II, club swinging could still be found in a few units. This is Fort Benning. Notice the jump tower in the background. But again, little attention is given to skill acquisition. The right front soldier is fairly correct, but all the others are not. In some units, clubs were misused and often broken. By the end of World War II, the Indian club became known as a war club and was often used in a circuit with virtually no instruction. The 1946 FM 2120 gives it only a paragraph that demonstrates how far club swinging had drifted from Lieutenant Colonel Curler's highly functional doctrine. This apparatus is a club with a handle. It should weigh about 20 pounds. It may be made from a fruit can filled with concrete 
and a handle of any convenient wood, or it can be fashioned entirely from wood. This club is swung violently from right to left and left to right, from over one shoulder to down by the ground on the other side in a chopping motion, or swung around the head one hand at a time. Other movements derived by the men or by the instructor may be substituted. The club should be swung continuously from the time this station is reached until the man progresses to the next station. And eventually, this is what it looked like. Even though club swinging had faded away by 1946, there was still much of value to be found in the 1946 FM 2120, and the Fort Benning team explored numerous training concepts from that period. This is an example. In December 1944, around two years before the 1946 FM 2120 was published, the Army published Tech Manual 8 2 9 or 2 physical reconditioning. And it also makes reference to club swinging. And once again, there is virtually no instruction. It simply says, hold the clubs so that the ball is in the palm of the hand and the neck is between the thumb and first finger. The movements are primarily those of small wrist circles, either above the shoulders, in front of the body, or in front of the hips. And when you look carefully at the illustrations, you'll notice they're incorrect. So the Fort Benning team turned to the 1914 Army Physical Training Manual. It was published while Lieutenant Colonel Curler was still at West Point, and it pays more attention to club swinging than any of the other manuals that followed. This is an example. The effect of these exercises when performed with light clubs is chiefly a neural one. Hence, they are primary factors in the development of grace, coordination, and rhythm, as they tend to supple the muscles and articulations of the shoulders and of the upper and forearms and wrists. They are indicated in cases where there is a tendency toward what is ordinarily known as muscle bound. But once again, when we begin to study the diagrams, we can see technical errors. Nevertheless, the basic patterns are still intact. and gave the Fort Benning team an opportunity to study how it was done in 1914. So in 1994, soldiers from across Fort Benning began to swing clubs and rebuild the doctrine. These are rangers from the 75th Ranger Regiment practicing in Audie Murphy Gymnasium. These soldiers are practicing outside Building 4. Hundreds of soldiers took part and benefited from the training. Eventually, club swinging spread to other posts. This is Fort Jackson, South Carolina, a basic training brigade NCOs and officers, and the response was overwhelmingly positive.
Eventually it spread to other services. These are Marines, sailors, and airmen at Corey Station in Florida on a beautiful sunny day out on the beach, swinging clubs. This is the Iowa Army National Guard. So, that brings us to the end of our story of how military club swinging was rediscovered 30 years ago in 1994 at Fort Benning, Georgia. It is a great example of what the Army calls lessons learned. Of course, club swinging is more popular today, but if you're still unfamiliar with it, we'll close this out with a brief look at some basic patterns and transitions. I'm using one pound clubs and I've slowed this down to 50% so you can take a look at some of the details. <laughs>